So you just got your first 3D printer and you want to start making some pretty sweet helmets. But unfortunately, knowing that these things are going to fit right before you print them is probably the bane of every maker's existence. Proper dimensions, proportions, making sure it fits past your ears. How do you figure all of that out? In this video, I want to take you guys through a couple of different methods I utilize to scaling helmets to fit my head. And I promise, some of them aren't as crazy as you think. Hey guys, I would really love to take a quick minute to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now wait, 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 please don't skip this. I know everybody's gonna grab their phone and tap. Just please hear me out one second. So it's been a few months since I've started using Skillshare myself and learning so much from their classes and I'm applying it to making YouTube videos to posting on social media. Like I'm genuinely learning stuff and it's pretty awesome. My entire channel and social media is about sharing and teaching you guys how to do everything I do. And that's what's great about a place like this. An absolutely huge example of this is taking pictures with my iPhone. That's how I post on social media. That's how I film my TikToks. That's how I make my Instagram posts. It all goes through this. And I just recently got done with a really cool class by a guy named Dale McManus on Skillshare that teaches how to take better photos with your iPhone. Dale's class in particular is iPhone photography, how to take pro photos on your iPhone. Now, I guarantee you most of you were just like me. You take a photo of something awesome and beautiful and you're just grabbing all the sliders and moving them around and trying to just see what looks right. And sometimes it doesn't come out nice. His class that's just about under an hour taught me so much more about those sliders, how to get the most out of your iPhone without using a fancy camera. This thing's pretty good if you know how to use it. And honestly, I was just kind of hip firing. If you look at some of my original Instagram photos, it's kind of like, what was I even doing? Compared to now, I'd say I'm getting way better lighting and angles on some of my photos. And this class genuinely helped me better understand what to and what not to do. But if that's not what particularly interests you, they offer so much more that I know would benefit you guys. So of course, you guys know what I'm about to say. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a free month trial of Skillshare. A thousand of you can just try it out and you can load up as much stuff as you want as quickly as you can. So go check out Skillshare, learn something new for free, and I really do hope it helps you guys like it's already been helping me. Let's get back to the video. The first method we're going to talk about is physically measuring your head to see if it matches up with the 3D files. Personally, this is my least favorite method because there is a lot of room for error and it's still hard to correlate some of those dimensions and measurements to the physical model. However, once you understand this method a little bit better, it can help you in some instances and it's actually pretty easy to do. Let's take a Mandalorian helmet for example here. This is actually probably one of the easiest helmets to scale and fit to your head because there's really only two dimensions you need to worry about, how wide it is and kind of how long the front and back is. That's going to determine whether or not it goes onto my head. Is my head too wide or is my head too long? So for something like that, I want to measure the widest part of my head, probably somewhere around my ears or temple to see if it's going to fit the width of the helmet. Now for this, you can go grab an awesome 3D file that's actually available from Uncle Jesse and Nico from Nico Industries, and it's a large cosplay caliper, and you print it out and it will help you measure point to point on your head. However, if you don't have something like that, you could literally do it with two pieces of cardboard that are taped together. For this, I'm gonna use these bendable workable arms because if I take them and then I touch my head right here, let's see, we'll hold them about here. So if my measurements are correct, we're looking at about six inches, but we're gonna to wanna to go to millimeters. So we're gonna looking at about 150 millimeters. You wanna go a little bit bigger. Obviously you don't want it squeezing your brain, so we'll say 150. Now for this method, you're gonna need a way to physically measure the model in a 3D space. I personally use Mesh Mixer for this, but if you can figure it out in NetFab or Cura or Prusa Slicer, that's totally up to you. So once you get the file into Mesh Mixer, you're gonna go to Analysis, go over here to Measure, and you're gonna select the third option up here with the two like circles and the arrow, and then you're gonna want the X in this case, and then Snap to Vertices. Now you're gonna see this red line and a bunch of numbers over here. I'm gonna go to the bottom of the helmet, and I'm gonna click on the very bottom and drag it in the middle. This is the width over here. You see the 208. That's how wide this helmet is in millimeters right there for us to see live. Now, obviously, I don't want the full width of the helmet because we're not too concerned about the wall, but I want to get as close to the middle as possible. So let's say something about there. 207. So this helmet is 207 millimeters wide. So it's actually a lot bigger than the biggest part of my head. So theoretically, it should fit. So it can be a little confusing to use at times, but you're going to have to play around with the X, Y, Z. In this case, I need to use the Z to go from the front to the back. And this is going to vary helmet to helmet, depending on which one you have in here. So in this case, it's 246. So we were about 150 wide. Now we're about 246. So let's measure something. I don't know, like the nose, my nose to the very back of my head. 
that's about the distance. Measure it one more time, and we're looking at roughly eh, 215 millimeters. So again, plenty of room. What this is telling me is I can scale this 3D model down a little bit and play with those dimensions. Now you can go into edit and then transform in Mesh Mixer and actually play with the scaling live, or you can scale it down into Cura and then play with it in there. But this is a little bit easier. The scale right now is a one ratio. So think of that as a hundred. I wanna scale this down to 90%. So we're gonna go 0.9. So the entire helmet just was scaled down uniformly to 90%. Let's measure it again and see how big it is. So now we're at about 180. That's looking a lot better. And then front to back is 217. That's almost spot on to the 215 we had before. And spoiler alert, I actually scaled this helmet down to exactly 90% and per those measurements and how it fits on my head, that's perfect. Now, unfortunately, where this method gets a little more complicated is helmets that are kind of wider at the top and sides than they are at the opening at the bottom. This Samus helmet has tons of room on the inside, but if you can't get your head through this bottom opening, it really doesn't matter how big or small you scale it. If you don't take into consideration that small opening and you go and print it out, unfortunately, it might get done and then you won't be able to get your head into the opening. Now, granted, you can sand and cut things afterwards, but really nobody wants to do that and it's gonna ruin the model. Iron Man helmets are notorious for this too, especially if you want them nice and scaled and you uniform fit. There's tons of room on the inside, but the openings typically are a little bit too small. However, the benefit to Iron Man helmets is typically they come apart into sections so you can scale them a little bit tighter fit to your head without having to squeeze your head through the hole. This is why I think the method of physically measuring your head really only applies to the simple helmets, like Nova helmets and Mandalorian domes. But this is all a perfect reason to talk about method two, test rings. And this method is fantastic for helmets that have multiple parts and pieces to them, kind of like this Nova Prime helmet. This thing fits like an absolute glove, and I would have never figured that out if I didn't print out some cross-sectional test rings for this helmet. But before we get more into the complicated helmets, let's look back at that Mandalorian helmet to see if we can use a test ring to better fit it to our head. I'm actually about to show you quite a few tricks in Mesh Mixer that'll help you through all of your 3D printing. So as I've shown in some of my other videos, Mesh Mixer has a really cool plane cut feature, and that lets you take slices out of the helmet. If I go and cut this directly as it is, cut, discard half, refilled mesh, and hit accept, it's literally gonna chop the helmet in half in that X and Y orientation. And you can move this around, up and down, you can flip it, you can rotate it, you can draw a line exactly where you wanna cut something. It can't get too complex. You can only do straight cuts, but this is perfect for what we needed to do. I wanna move this down to a lower part of the helmet, probably about there. I'm gonna flip it, make sure I have a full ring, front to back, kinda like that. And then I'm gonna go and cut that out. Now we're left with a little chunk of the helmet and we're gonna go and do that one more time. And we're actually making a tiara-like ring to fit around our head. Now I'm left with a perfect cross section of this helmet width and the length that I can print out and try to put over my head. Now in this case, it's gonna be a little tricky because it's this is gonna to wanna to open up, but you're gonna to wanna to do it as relaxed as possible. If my head can fit through this ring, then theoretically my head should fit through the bottom opening of the helmet. Now again, this is the simplest way to do it with a helmet that has this giant opening in the bottom and really no complex shapes. So let's drop something in a little more complicated. This is the Mark 85 Iron Man helmet by Akira Yuming. And as you can see, the opening at the bottom is a lot smaller than the actual width of the helmet. The ears stick out more and your head could probably fit in here only if you could get through this hole. But what if you get a helmet that comes in a bunch of pieces, not unlike most Iron Man helmets? Now, sometimes they'll include the full helmet to give you a good reference, sometimes they won't. Take the files and drop them into Mesh Mixer and slowly rebuild them. It's gonna ask you to append or replace. You always want to append and this will hopefully put it in the right position. Now, if it doesn't drop it in the exact perfect position, you can go over here to edit, you can go over to transform, and then you can grab the file and move it around, and hopefully you'll be able to line it up as good as possible, and uh, it doesn't cause you too much issues. I'm gonna drop all three pieces of this Iron Man helmet in here. Now I have what I need to measure my head. I'm gonna hold shift, select all of them, and combine them, and now I have one solid model I can make cuts through. We're gonna use that same method of making test rings, except now I'm gonna try to make two. I'm gonna focus on cutting one out that's as close to the bottom of the dome as possible, and then probably the widest part of the dome to make sure that my head fits in there.
that's not looking too bad. That's gonna give me the exact dimensions I need. I can go flip this over, drop it in a Cura, print it out and see if my head fits through it. And then I can go and do the same thing with the main part of the helmet that was gonna go around my ears. Using methods like that, you can get helmets really tightly fitting to your head first shot and they look pretty good. However, I didn't really know about this method when I was making this helmet in particular and I got this scale so good just by printing multiples and scaling it down bit by bit by bit and I went through a lot of filament that way. Personally, I don't recommend it, but it's how I got this one so dialed in. Now again, the test rings is just another tool in your arsenal. You can also scale up and apply the test ring method to scaling entire cosplay armors, taking out cross sections to see if your body parts fit into the pieces before you pump off a four day print and then it doesn't fit up your leg. But probably the best way to scale helmets to your head is to have a 3D scan of your own dome. Isn't this haunting and terrifying? Now, this method isn't gonna be as readily accessible to everybody, but it's more accessible than you'd think. Now, you can go get your hands on a really fancy, expensive 3D scanner. This is the RevoPoint Pop. I think they just released number two, and it's fairly easy to use, and it gets you really good results. Most modern phones now, especially the new iPhones, are equipped with LiDAR, which means they can 3D scan things too. There are free and paid scanning apps like Scandi Pro and PolyScan that will let you sit there, take pictures, and scan your entire head and offload an STL or OBJ. Now you're gonna have to go and watch some tutorials on the particular one you want to download, check some reviews, but they're pretty easy to use. And you don't need a high detail, high quality scan. You just need the basic geometry of your own dome. This way you can import it into Mesh Mixer and use that to scale the helmet. So this is the absolutely haunting scan of my head. You'll notice I had to put a cap on because uh, uh, scanners don't like scanning dark hair. It doesn't reflect the LiDAR properly. You can use baby powder or talcum powder or even some types of uh, hair dye or spray paint. to get a better color, but I just threw a cap on because again, I needed just the basic geometry of my head. Now, if I go and drop a helmet into Mesh Mixer with my head scan, I can then use the transform feature or you can drop it into Cure, that's totally fine, but you can use this feature to move the helmet over your head and check for scaling. And this actually looks like it fits pretty well if anything, it's a little bit too big. And if I had seen that comparison before printing this, I probably would have scaled this helmet down probably about 5% just so it lines up a little bit better and it's not as loose on my head. But per the original scale of this helmet and what the 3D scan of my head is showing, everything tracks on how this was supposed to line up. And what's great about the 3D scanning method is you only need to do it once. Once I have the STL file in my head uploaded onto my computer, that's it. I never have to do it again. It's a one and done. I actually just got this Moon Knight helmet file from Nico Industries, and as you can see, it's a rather large helmet. I'm not sure what the 3D modeler was thinking or how big his head is, but you can see how much room is inside this thing. And if I had printed this at 100% scale, it would have been a huge waste of filament. Honestly, something like 85% or maybe even 80% looks a little bit more realistic on what would fit around my head. You can see my chin's gonna tuck in nicely there. My nose isn't protruding through the front. This is almost a perfect scale. So there'd be a 20% scaling difference if I had gone and printed that helmet first shot without trying to do any of these methods. Now, I could have done a couple methods to go and figure that out. We could have gone back to the cosplay caliper or the tape measure. We could have done test rings, or if I had a 3D scanner, well, I could have just checked. The last thing I wanna talk about is reusing measurements and successful prints to help you gauge and scale future projects. This Mark 85 helmet at I think 95 or 96 percent is a perfect fit around my head. Now say I don't have a 3D scan in my head, but I know I successfully printed this helmet and I like how it fits. I can now go and take that helmet that I know fits me very nicely, modify the scale, and then use that helmet to compare to another helmet I wanna print. Now, this is again a real brute force method, but it'll give you a good indication if a helmet's automatically way too big. And this Samus helmet is huge. Honestly, 85% is starting to look a lot better. And I can tell you from using this exact method with this exact helmet, that's how I was able to scale this so good. Now, I know some of you probably wanted the end-all be-all answer to this, but unfortunately, not all helmets are created equal. Just because you got this one to scale and fit perfectly doesn't mean this one's not gonna give you a little bit of trouble. And that's where I think the most important part of this video comes into play, trial and error. You're going to make mistakes, you're gonna mess some stuff up, and unfortunately, you're gonna waste some filament, but it's just part of the hobby, and it's learning from those mistakes and learning how to mitigate them next time that really goes a long way. I've printed tons of helmets, too big or too small, and you learn from it. You try to figure out why it happened, and hey, honestly, then you have something to practice on, or you can finish it and maybe even sell it, depending on what it is. As Bob Ross says, we don't make mistakes, 
we have happy accidents. And as frustrating as this hobby can be sometimes, well, it's still pretty fun. Now, before we wrap up this video, I wanna link a couple other videos down below. One of the big questions is how do you print large helmets on small printers? I have a perfect video for that. So even if you scale any of these helmets and you wanna print them, you'll even be able to print them on something like an Ender 3. I'm also gonna link some tutorials for better settings, how to better use mesh mixer, what to look for when orienting and printing parts on pretty much anything, and other videos I know will help you guys. So please give them a watch. I promise they're packed full of information and you'll learn something new. And if you guys have any methods that I didn't mention in this video, please leave some comments down below. I want this to become a nice thread of information and if I miss something, I want to learn about it, and this way we can also tell other people. But that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. I know it's going to be frustrating at first, but I promise if you push through, you're going to have one hell of a time. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good day.